सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली when parliament is on a lot of important issues come up and many of those issues we might not have paid attention to all this while because they were not in the headlines but they are very important and you know what going ahead they might make the biggest headlines as is the question of delimitation of lok sabha constituencies in india now in india lok sabha constituencies still are more or less as they were since 1971 so under indian constitution article 81 after every census that is after every decennial census india's parliament size has to adjust to the population right that stopped happening article 82 then says further on that as these constituencies are then delimited or redefined they must reflect the fairness of number of people or population proportion of population per constituency so that distribution of power voting power or voting share among india's population it is one man one vote one woman one vote one indian one vote that principle is followed now that's a bit of a problematic issue because not all states in the union have their population growing at the same rate so what happens when some states have their population stabilizing or maybe even decreasing and there are a couple like that and some states where population is going up very fast by implication states where population is declining are responsible states because family planning has been the union government's national policy states which in spite of that policy are letting their population rise very fast are irresponsible states but if you apply the logic of numbers then what happens then irresponsible states end up having more members in the same parliament because size of the pie is limited it is 543 right now tomorrow it can be 848 or 888 or whatever but if you follow the proportionate principle the population principle then those states where population grows faster will then get more mps in the same house at the cost of those which are controlling their population that is the problem that came up in this session of parliament this can has been kicked down the road by indian politics for good reason for a long time in fact for more than 50 years now in 1971 it was that the idea that this delimitation will take place every 10 years that began to be questioned because mrs gandhi indira gandhi also realized that this was going to be problematic so in 1976 in her emergency parliament mrs gandhi had a decision taken that this process was being put off till 2001 so between 1971 census to 2001 census there was going to be no effect of decennial census reports or population changes on the size of indian parliament or on the proportion of seats at the various states had in the same parliament because what is india it's a federation of states it's a union of states so she put it off till 2001 then mr vajpay again another wise leader in 2002 further kicked it down to 2026 and he also did not say this will be done in 2026 he said the new delimitation of lok sabha will begin after the first decennial census held after 2026 so the process thinking planning may become in 2026 but the census if they were taking place still on decennial basis i don't know what will happen now because 2021 census is still not happened and we are just a couple of days from 2022 ending now and there is no plan in 2020 2023 next is the election year so i don't quite know what the future of india's decennial census is nevertheless if a census was to be held in 2031 vajpayee government and that parliament decided in 2002 they bought themselves or indian polity or india three decades of time so this process may begin after 2031 if a census takes place then but if a census census doesn't take place that has its own consequences now what's happened is already some talk in that direction has started 
that there will be a change. And one of the reasons the talk has come in is because soon enough, I think by budget session, at least some part of parliament sessions and proceedings is going to be held in the new parliament building. That new parliament building has many more seats. Now, we don't know exactly, but it probably has something like, if you believe all the informed stories, it has 888 seats. Now, why do you want 888 seats? Your looks about only as 543. So one way of putting that is that, look, it's because if you have a joint session, you can accommodate everybody. That's one idea. The fact is that everybody believes in the political system, not just in Latvian Delhi, but regional parties everywhere, that Modi government intends to expand the size of Lok Sabha. In fact, if you expand the size of Lok Sabha, as per India's population now following the yardsticks that India has followed, India will then have the largest parliament in the world, as probably India should, given its population. India is the most populous democracy in the world. I know Xi Jinping calls uh, his country a democracy as well, but let's leave that aside for a moment. Uh, so if that happens, then does each state then continue to have seats in that expanded parliament in the same proportion as it does now? UP has 80 in a house of 543. So what will UP have in a house of say 846? So we have a paper, we have a research paper. It's a 2019 research paper. It's been reported in Hindustan Times. Then it has a lot of data. It's by Milan Vaishnav and Jamie Hinton for Carnegie. Now they say that if, if they project India's population, say in 2026, if that is the population based on based on what we know from the 2011 population, then the size of Indian Lok Sabha would be 846. If the size of Indian Lok Sabha then is 846, then UP share there will be 143. So that increase from 80 to 143 will be 78.75%. On the other hand, what will happen to a state like Kerala? Kerala has 20 seats now it will still have only 20 seats. Why? Because Kerala has been very responsible in controlling its population. It, its total fertility rate is well below 2%. 2% is about what you need to have replacement value for your population. That means 100 people go to the heaven or wherever and 100 more are added. Anything more than 2% TFR, that is the total number of babies a woman produces in her fertile years, right? That is the total fertility rate. If that is above 2, then your population will go up. If that is below 2, your population will not go up. At 2, your population will remain the same. So Kerala has been 1.56, 1.6. It's gone up a little bit now, 1.8. But these are fluctuations well below the replacement level. UP, on the other hand, is growing well above 2.3, 2.2. 4%. The fact is, UP is slowly getting its act together. The state that isn't is Bihar. So we will see what happens to the various states. And now this distinction, you've seen Tamil Nadu has its seats going up by 22.5%. If applying the same principle, population principle in 2026, UP has it going up by 78.75%. Kerala is not going up at all. So that's got southern states very worried. That's why in this session of parliament, winter session of parliament, during the discussion on supplementary grants, some southern MPs spoke up. That includes prominently Kani Mori. And you want to read more on this, read a story that my colleague Ishadrita Lahiri has written on this. It's a detailed story on this issue. So she's quoted many of these southern MPs. So NB Somu of DMK and Kani Mori, so I quote within quotes, Tamil Nadu is the only state which sincerely and successfully implemented the family planning program proposed by the union government. And the DMK MPs go on to add, quote, South Indian states, particularly Tamil Nadu, have contro controlled their populations greatly. And in North Indian states, family planning was not implemented sincerely and with due respect. As a result, there is an increase in population of states like UP and Bihar. And then they go on to say, and please listen carefully, and I quote again, it is absolutely ridiculous and very unfair that states which successfully implemented family planning are penalized and the states that are reckless are being incentivized. Now you see, what will happen, what will happen if the population logic in expanding the size of parliament and also reallocating these seats 
is implemented. So first of all, there is a basic, there is a basic issue in India and see this graphic. This is the most important graphic. This graphic tells you how birth rates or total fertility, fertility rates, that is number of babies produced by a woman in her reproductive years, how many per woman are being produced in key states. So if you see, there's been a reduction all over India. So average Indian rate, overall Indian total fertility rate you can see on the graphic has come down. In fact, everything has come down, which is a good thing. So total fertility rate has come down, right? But then you see the Bimaru state, that is Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and we had Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand there for the simple reason that they both came out of the earlier larger Bimaru states, that is Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. If you see the line for them, that line is also declined, but it's well above the national average. If you see below that, for the south, the south, the line is even lower, which means the south is way below national average when it comes to population increase. And, and south is below Bimaru states by a factor of almost twice as much if you see on the same graph. It means south has done the best job of population control, although you can see there's a slight turn lately. It's gone up just a little bit, but that's pro probably because it had gone down too much. What this means is, if a delimitation takes now, then the states of the south will suffer in comparison in a new parliament that comes up as a result of this, there will be an imbalance or at least the south will see it as an imbalance and that will put a strain on the federal structure because in the federal structure, all states are the same. What this will mean is something that Congress party's Karthi Chidambaram said. Karthi Chidambaram told Ishadrita that, and I quote, electorally, it would imply that by winning the heartland, a national party can ignore the southern states. This will weaken our federal structure. Again, from the left parties, I gave you the first two quotes from DMK leaders in the south. Now, this one is from the Congress party and now the left. Left party is John Vitas, again in Rajya Sabha. He says, and I quote, the popular saying is, if you don't perform, you perish. It can't be changed to, if you perform, you may also still perish. And then he goes on to add, and I quote again, the spirit of this was discussed 25 years ago, and that spirit should prevail. So he's taking you back to Vajpayee's times. The spirit of this was discussed 25 years ago. That spirit should prevail. Southern states should not be penalized for their success in population control because that was national policy. Now you see, you saw the difference between, say, national average, Bimaru state's average, and southern average. But again, if you look at the entire country, once again, see this chart. This chart we have taken from the Vaishnav Hinton paper. This chart tells you what will be the number of MPs from each state if the house is reconstituted in 2026 as per the projected population then. So look at this chart and absorb it and it will stay on the screen while I go on talking. Now, if you look at this chart, see what will happen. See what will happen. Uttar Pradesh, which is today, which today has 80 seats, will have 143. Bihar, which today has 40 seats, 40 will have 79. Madhya Pradesh will go from 29 to 52. Rajasthan will go from 25 to 50. It will double. These are the four major Bimaru states. Then you go to the new states which have come out of these. So see, for example, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh also. Jharkhand will go up from 14 to 24. And Chhattisgarh will go from 11 to 19. Now let me do a basic calculation for you. If you add up the seats of all these states, that is UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Bimaru as of today. I'm sorry, it's an unfortunate expression, but that expression has stuck. And the truth is, these states have to do better on their social indicators to throw that weight off their shoulders, unfortunately. So if you look at the numbers then, then UP, Bihar, MP, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Today have 199 seats in a 543 member house. 199 in a 543 member house is 36.6% of the seats. That means these six states between themselves control 36.64% of the seats in national parliament. If this parliament is constituted in 2026 based on the population that is projected for then, and has 848 seats overall, this 36.64 will become 
43.35 percent so this is a net increase of about seven percent so what will happen on the other hand to the southern states so the states of the south that is kerala tamil nadu andhra and telangana karnataka that is 129 these 129 seats in today's parliament of 543 are 23.57 so the, well, almost one fourth of the seats but in the new parliament if there was to be won the national parliament 2026 where bimaru states will go up from 36.64% to 43.38% these southern states will go down their total number of seats will go up to 168 because it's a larger parliament but they will go down in percentage from 23.57 to 19.85 and that is the issue with southern states and that is what they are complaining about now within this you will find other very interesting figures for example you might say bimaru okay bimaru usually are states towards the east of india right but see odisha see how well odisha has done odisha you will see that state of odisha which we usually we see as a very poor state that actually has done very well on its total total fertility rate it's gone below replacement level so the population of odisha is not rising on the other hand if you look at bihar that is the second worst performing state in india or i would say the worst performing state because it's almost a dead heat between bihar and meghalaya but meghalaya is still a very small population so the base is very small but look at look at bihar that is the state which has to get its act together and that is not happening again you see surprises look at west bengal see how well west bengal has done that is 1.77% below below replacement level usually again you would think oh these are eastern states west bengal odisha very backward must be really poor social indicators but no data tells you something else and where have we got this data from we haven't got this data from some think tank or some place so somebody in the government or some place will say you can't take it seriously we've got this data from the government it's from the national family health survey data it also tells you some other very interesting things look at punjab and haryana for example if you see once again the map from the carnegie paper that shows you that punjab gets 18 seats in 2026 if it is, parliament is redone based on the new population haryana also get 18 seats what is the balance between them today today haryana has 10 punjab has 13 right so with this both will have 18 and 18 now it's not as if today punjab's population is much higher than haryana it's 3 crores haryana is 2.77 so you might say okay if there has to be population equity in terms of how many seats you get haryana should get a few more but the fact is that if this continues then haryana's population may actually become higher than punjab's because punjab's birth rate total fertility rate is among the lowest in the country it's among the lowest in the country in fact it's lower than any other state except at this point the tiny state of goa and kashmir so kashmir is 1.4 Punjab is 1.6, Tamil Nadu is low also right now. West Bengal is 1.77 as I told you. Karnataka is 1.7, but Punjab is 1.6. Haryana is higher than Punjab. Again, see on the chart. So in the process, can you imagine? This will cause complications not just between the north and the south, but this will also cause complications at local level. So can you imagine how Punjab might react if they find that in the new parliament? they have only about as much representation as the decidedly smaller state of haryana so once again there is a reason why leaders in the past indira gandhi vajpayee and with everybody else being in cahoots all other parties indian political leaders at least at a certain level have a sense of responsibility so they've kicked this can down the road what will happen right now i don't know because if a delimitation does happen and if the structure of parliament is expanded or altered based on the new population realities this will cause really strong centrifugal pressures within our federal structure so once again the chances are and i'm speculating chances are that this will once again be delayed for a wiser generation or for a better idea in the course of time if but if it doesn't then this issue has the potential of defining our politics for the next two decades